Hello everybody, how's it going? I've noticed a lot of you watched my recent Cobblemon video that I made, and you've been asking some questions relating to the mods that I was using in that video, and to be honest, that's a more complicated question to answer than you think, so I figured I'd make a little bit of a tutorial slash guide video, explaining and showing you guys how to set it up yourself in your own Minecraft single player game, or even your own dedicated server. Also, real quick, before we jump into the guide, I do want to explain why some of you guys might have been experiencing some inconsistencies between the mod pack that I was playing in that video and the mod pack you might have downloaded to try out yourself. The reason that's happening is because the mod pack I linked in that video description, it is actually the mod pack we started that server with. However, after playing it for about a week or so, we began to realize that some things were a little bit off, like some Pokemon models were conflicting with each other and some mods were pretty outdated. So I took it upon myself of going through the tedious process of making kind of like a V2 of that mod pack, which includes all the most updated versions of those mods. I I did end up going and manually getting rid of conflicting models that were in some of the resource packs like the hidden mons resource pack, all the mons, and also mystic mons. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to set this up yourself. First off, I'm going to show you how to do it for single player, because the process is different for setting it up in single player and for your own dedicated server. So the first thing I'd recommend is that you go down in the description and you click the Multi-MC link. Multi-MC is one of the most popular Minecraft instance programs out there. It essentially lets you have multiple versions of Minecraft with all sorts of different mod packs installed without having to go in and swap the mods in and out whenever you want to change mod packs. Once you've got Multi-MC installed, open it up. It should look a little bit like this. It might actually look a bit more up to date. I've got kind of an older version here and also make sure that you log into your account here in the top right otherwise you won't be able to play multiplayer once you've done that the next thing you want to do is download this cobblemon 1.6.1 client zip folder this will also be linked in the description this includes all of the files that you're going to need to put into your minecraft instance directory so once you've got multi mc opened up the first thing we're going to do is create a new instance i just like clicking here in the middle with right click and go and create instance you can do the top left as well if you want to we're going to go ahead and choose one point 21.1 that is the version of minecraft that my mod pack is compatible with and we're going to click ok now that that's created we're going to have a new instance here called 1.21.1 ignore these other ones they're just my other instances but we're looking at this one right here now we're going to right click this we're going to go to edit instance and then we're going to go over here on the right where it says install fabric once you click that you're going to see a lot of different options you want to click the one with the golden star icon 0.16.13 that is the version that's going to work for us. Now that you've got fabric in there, we're going to go over to the settings tab over here and we're just going to increase the RAM allocation a little bit. So I've got 32 gigs of RAM on my PC. I like to allocate about 10 gigs. So all I do is I just add a zero here to the maximum memory allocation. I would recommend at least six gigabytes for this mod pack. So if you have the RAM for it, try and allocate six gigabytes here. Once we've allocated the RAM, we're going to go ahead and close out of that window and we're going to launch this instance of Minecraft. So just double click it, it'll start launching. The reason you do this is you just want to make sure everything's running and working properly before we start putting any mods in or messing with any files. Okay, so here we go. I've got my little Minecraft window open and I am in the main menu. Everything is working fine. You can see at the bottom left here, we got Minecraft 1.21.1 Fabric. So now we can quit the game, close out of that. Now that we've done that, we need to get into the file directory of this instance. So what I like to do is you just right click on the instance, go over to Minecraft folder, and that is going to take us into the directory of the instance. We do want to go back one folder though and go over to this folder the 1.21.1 folder or for you it'll be named whatever you named your instance and here we have .minecraft instance config and mmc pack json now we're going to open up the zip folder that you guys have downloaded inside of it you'll see cobblemon 1.6.1 in there you will see the files that need to be dragged into here so we're just going to take these files drag all of them into this folder. It's going to ask us if we want to replace anything and we're going to click yes, replace all the files. Perfect. Now that that's done, if we go into .minecraft, we will have all of the files, including the shader packs, the mods, the config, it'll all be in here, ready to go. Now that that's done, we can launch the instance again and see if it's updated. Oh, there you go. You can see the icons change. That's a good sign. Keep in mind, it is going to take a little bit longer to open up this time because it's got to load a lot of mods. And now that we're in here, we can see at the bottom left that we have 238 mods loaded. And now before we do anything else, we want to set up our resource packs. So go into options, go to resource packs, and I'm going to overlay a clip of me scrolling through my resource packs so that you guys can see exactly the load order that I have them in. And all you need to do is look at the load order 
and make sure that it's the same on your game. Once you've moved those resource packs over to the right side and you've made sure the load order is correct, now you can click done and get out of this menu. It'll probably take a little bit to load at that point. And now we're almost there. If you want to play your own single player Cobblemon world with this pack, the last thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the data packs are going to be in your world folder. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead to single player, preparing for world creation. We're going to go to the create new world menu and we're going to head over to the more tab where you have the data packs button. If you click the data packs button, Button. All the data packs should already be loaded and looking something like this. If they're not coming up here for you, don't worry. I'll show you how to put them in manually once we make the world. All right, so now we're going to go over to game. We're going to name this. I'm just going to name this world test world. And then we're just going to click create new world. And there we go. I'm in the world now as you can see. And before I do anything in the world, I'm going to quickly go and check my multi MC. I'm going to go again to the Minecraft folder of that instance. And now I'm going to go to this saves folder. This is where all your world files are. I'm going to go to this test world, which is the one I just made. Open that up. And then I'm going to go into data packs. Now, as you can see, my data packs folder is empty. This means that currently on this world, none of our data packs are actually running, which means we're going to be missing out on lots of features. If this is the case for you, don't worry. Save and quit to title, and once you're back in the menu, open up that folder again, go back to the .minecraft directory, and go to this data packs folder. So it's a little bit confusing. There's a data packs folder in the main Minecraft directory, and then there's another data packs folder inside of your actual world. The data packs are not gonna work unless they're in the world. So what we wanna do is we wanna copy this data packs folder, just like that, and then we wanna go into the saves, into the test world, and then we want to paste the data packs folder in here. What that's going to do is it's going to put all the data packs in the actual world. Now that they're in there, we can go back into Minecraft and back into our world. And just to double check, we can open up that same folder again now into the saves, into the test world, into the data packs. And you can see all of the data packs are right here and loaded. And there we go. That's how you get it set up and working inside of your single player world. Now that that's done, I'm going to show you guys how to put this mod pack into your dedicated server. So I can close out of multi MC now. Don't need that anymore. Over here on the left, you'll notice I have another Cobblemon 1.6.1 RAR, but this one says server at the end. This will also be in the video description. So go Go ahead and download that and get yourself a Minecraft server running on 1.21.1 on Fabric. I'm not going to be showing you how to get the base server itself set up in this video because there's hundreds of tutorials on how to do that on YouTube already, but I do have this example server that I've set up just for the purposes of this video. So when you guys set up your server, it will probably look something similar to this inside of the directory. It might not be the exact same because this is actually a duplicate of a different modded server that I play on, so it might have some extra folders here and there, but it's generally got the same structure. and the the process itself is pretty similar to what we just did on multi MC. Once you've got your server, you want to run it once with just fabric installed, make sure that it launches and everything's going okay. Once you've done that, you can close your server and open up the Cobblemon 1.6.1 server zip. In here, you'll find mods, data packs, and config. So just like we did with multi MC, we're just going to take these three folders and we're going to drag them over into this main directory. There we go. So now if we open mods, all the mods should be in there. Perfect. We open up config. The configs are all there and good to go. And the data packs folder has all the data packs in it. But remember, the data packs need to be in the world folder. So what we're going to do now, if you've already launched the server once to make sure that it works, you're going to already have a world folder here. So go inside of that world folder, select everything in it, and just go ahead and delete everything. There we go. Now we have an empty world folder. So what we can do now is we can copy the data packs folder and we can paste it inside of this empty world folder. And what that's going to do is now the next time you launch the server, it's going to recognize you've already got a folder named world here and it's already got data packs in it. So it's going to just use those data packs when building the world. Now, all you need to do is just run your server, whether it's through the jar or a run.bat file, whatever you prefer. And if you followed all the steps up to this point, it should open up for you without a problem. I've also just remembered, guys, there's one more thing I want to mention because I know this is going to be a problem for you if you don't do it. The Cobblemon Rider mod has a config that you need to separately install and add into your world folder. So if you go over to the Cobblemon Rider mod page, which I'll also link in my description, you can scroll down here in the description of the mod and you'll find this new config here. This is a link to the config that you need to put into your world folder. So once you get to this Dropbox page, just go ahead and click this download button. You should be able to click down at the bottom, continue with download only so you don't need to log in. 
Pokemon, and then you should have this Pokemon Ride Config JSON downloaded in your downloads folder. All you need to do with that now is whether it's your server or your multi MC instance, it's the same thing. You just go into your world folder and you just simply drag and drop the Pokemon Ride Config JSON into that world folder. Without this config in your game, lots of the Pokemon won't be rideable, so make sure you put that in too. And with that, guys, that's pretty much it. You've now installed the same Cobblemon mod pack that I was running in that video from the other day. Everything should be working fine for the most part. Keep in mind, though, a lot of these mods are being updated every single day. Some of them have some minor conflicts. So if you run into a few bugs here and there, that's to be expected. But generally, it should be working fine. Lastly, thank you guys so much for the support over on the Cobblemon video. And I hope this tutorial helped you out. Of course, feel free to let me know in the comments how you went with your setup. That's it from me, guys. I'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that I upload. Goodbye.